Welcome to our Wednesday devotion. Thanks for connecting and supporting each other over these last couple of weeks as we live in what's now known as our new normal. It's that Easter season with Good Friday just over a week away. And so we're going to turn to Mark chapter 8 today and consider Mark 8, 29 and 31. But what about you? he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Messiah. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law and he must be killed after three days and rise again. Jesus was heading to the end. The end of his earthly ministry. But it was also the pinnacle and why he came. Up to this point, Jesus spent time in and around the Galilean countryside, demonstrating with great power that he was the Son of God, that he was the Messiah, the one who was to come. But now Jesus moves into a season of being on his way to Jerusalem, and he points that fact that he is the Messiah. He is the hope of the world. He is our joy, our peace, and our hope. So today, who do you say he is? Who do you say he is with your life and your actions and your words? What testimony do you have? Mark chapter 8 functions as a hinge. In the first part of the story, Jesus is asking his disciples a very important question. Who do you say I am? This is not the first time that his identity has come into question. Throughout Mark and the Gospels, people frequently considered, wondered, questioned, who is this Jesus? Maybe you have a familiar question. Maybe you have a similar one. Who is Jesus? Who is this man I see in the pages of God's Word? However, this is the first time that Jesus himself poses the question. And it's to his disciples. So guys, who do you say I am? What have you seen? What have you heard? What have you put together in your minds? Who do you say that I am? And this all takes place in Caesarea Philippi. A city named after Caesar Augustus. There was a temple there where this Caesar was worshipped. So Peter responds, you are the Messiah. It shows that Peter understood in part who Jesus was. Jesus is God's anointed king who would disarm the powers and authorities of that time. Peter's response is called the Great Confession. While his confession is great, it still was a little bit misguided. Following Peter's answer, Jesus went on to clearly tell them what would take part, what would happen. Mark 8:31. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. We shouldn't miss how startling, how confronting that would be to Peter. Mark says Peter was so disturbed that he rebuked Jesus. Rebuked him. The same thing that Jesus did to those who were demon possessed and, and to calm those stormy seas. Peter's rebuke reveals that he still didn't quite get it. He was expecting the Messiah that will come with military might. Not the suffering servant, not our servant king. Many people have their own shallow view of Jesus the Messiah too. Some prefer Jesus without his cross. 
Some prefer not to recognize him as the risen Lord and their hope and saviour. Jesus wants us to see that he is the servant king, but also the triumphant king. He comes and meets us in our place of need. He is the Messiah. He is our hope. He is and was the servant king. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 15, And having disarmed the powers and the authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. As we close today, I just want to focus on two psalms. From Psalm 9, verse 9. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. And Psalm 22, verse 19. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Lord, you are not far from us. And we thank you for that. God bless you, my friends. Chat with you soon.